Hi there, this is Alexandra from the Middle Size Garden YouTube channel and blog with part two of Plant Heroes. And these are plants that I have noticed last and last and last in my garden. They make a great impact, not just for a few weeks, but for a few months or across several seasons. I've been doing monthly garden tours for the last year and I noticed that certain plants pop up again and again and again. And I thought you would find these useful. I think small fruit trees have simply got to be a plant hero for a small or middle-sized garden. You get the most beautiful blossom in spring and it's often one of the first things that appears in the garden. Then in late summer you get the fruit and of course you can either harvest that and eat it or turn it into jams or jellies or leave it on the branch for the wildlife to eat and also to provide yourself with some winter interest in the garden. I think that of all the trees crab apple has to be the best in this respect and when you're buying a crab apple tree always ask for one that holds its fruit well. Mine is Malus gorgeous and it continues to have red fruit on it until probably the beginning of February and of course this provides a wonderful food for the birds but it is just gorgeous to see in my garden. On top of this a lot of the fruit trees have also got gorgeous autumn colour. My next plant hero is lavender. Now if your garden is very damp or cold lavender will probably struggle. But if your garden does well with lavender, it just goes on and on. I planted these lavender about, probably about six or seven years ago. I cut them back quite hard. There's a video in the description below which will tell you about pruning your lavender so that you can maintain it in a really nice, neat, clipped shape. But if you do maintain it in a clipped shape, then you will have this lovely blue-grey foliage throughout the winter, creating a winter shape and interest. And then in the summer, the lavender flowers, they smell gorgeous. The wildlife adore them. You will see butterflies and bees and hoverflies and all sorts of pollinating insects. And those flowers will probably be out for about six weeks. So once again, you've got months of interest from lavender. This next plant hero, is a latecomer to my garden. I only actually started growing it last year. Like many people, I was put off it because it was grown absolutely everywhere in the 1970s and 80s, and that's formiums. Now, formiums have wonderful shape, a really strong sword-like leaves. And if your garden is full of beautiful flowers, then having a really strong shape in there to contrast it is wonderful. So the formiums do look good in summer. But also what's great about them is they look just as good in winter. And when there's hardly anything in the garden, having the strong contrast of those long sword-like leaves is fantastic. And of course, there are some great colours as well. There are some striped formiums. Here I've got Formium Joker, which is red striped. And it just looks great. Once again, does very well in pots, but you can put it in the ground. Uh, I, seems to survive practically anything. I have not fed this, I have barely watered it. A very easy maintenance plant that will give you, I would say, 12 months interest in the garden. My next hero plant is the Allium. The Alliums in this garden mainly self-seed. I planted them probably, I think, over six, seven, eight years ago. Their green leaves cover the brown soil quite early on in spring, which means that the garden suddenly looks a little bit better. The green leaves are there when the tulips are out. So that really makes a difference to the garden looking less bare and wintry. And then in June, we get Allium Purple Sensation and Allium Christophii, and they're really sculptural again. They make quite strong shapes. The bees adore them, and they just create such a wow factor in the garden. And then even when the plants are over, they maintain a sort of dried seed head effect for at least another four to five weeks. So I would say that alliums are a strong presence in my garden from probably about late April, May up until July or August. And I think that is really good value for any garden plant. And with both Allium Christophii and Allium Purple Sensation, they also self seed. So actually it has been very inexpensive.
My last plant hero is the silver birch tree. Now, my garden is 100 feet long and about 80 feet wide at its widest, and that's why I call it middle-sized. So I have got room for something like a birch tree, but it is so beautiful that even if your garden is a quarter of that size, I think you need to think about whether you can put birch trees in. Because the bark is so beautifully pale, it shines out brightly and it makes it a much less, you can have a much larger tree with a pale bark like that. It's the most beautiful ghostly shape in the winter and in the summer it has actually a very light canopy. You will see it in so many show gardens, particularly at RHS Chelsea or RHS Hampton Court and that happens year after year after year and the reason why that is is because even if you have a courtyard garden, if you're going to have one decent sized tree, the silver birch is probably the one you'd want to choose. Mine are silver birch Jack Montii and I wash them once a year for super whiteness and there's a video about that in the description below. If you've enjoyed this, do please hit like because then I'll know you want to hear more about plants. The Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel uploads on Saturdays with tips, ideas and inspiration for small and middle sized gardens because actually when you think about your garden, sometimes it feels awfully big because you've got to weed it and sometimes it feels very small because you can't fit everything in and that means it's middle sized. So please join me again and thank you for watching.